Hey, Dr. Charlie here, and the purpose of this video is to give you uh, a 30,000 foot view of how you can escape the chaos of doing random things, getting random results, and put some order to it. Because, um, you know, if we think in terms of systems, so systems thinking and feedback loops, uh, this is how the world works. It's not as random as we think it is. I'm not saying that uh, it means, you know, solving this problem will be easy, but it's really simple, actually. So uh, get that the world runs on systems, the language system, right? We have uh, the alphabet, which then if you put those things together, uh, form words and then they form sentences and that's how we speak. You have a number system. So you have one, two, three, four, five, all the way up, I guess as big as you want to go, right? And that is how we can put those things together, uh, solve equations, solve problems. And that is how then we maybe engineer buildings or whatever. Okay. We've got the legal system. There's some rules and regulations. Obviously we have to follow a social system. There's a hierarchy, there's classes, things like that. Uh, and obviously there's many more systems, but the point is, is that if you don't understand these systems as a human, you won't be able to function. Therefore, if you don't understand the system and how the body works, uh, then you won't be able to uh, heal yourself or you're going to have a really challenging time. So you need to understand um, that the body also runs on systems. So uh, the cardiovascular system, the muscular, skeletal, nervous, respiratory, reproductive, digestive, and we can go on and on. The body has systems. Now you can think in terms of systems, which is basically seeing the whole, okay, versus component thing, which is our component thinking, which is seeing, you know, just one little thing. So looking at a bike and only looking at, um, you know, one little part of it, the little gear on the back wheel or something like that. Uh, component thinking is not uh, useful because if you look at it in isolation, uh, you can't understand how it impacts the whole system. All right. So this is why, uh, you know, I call, I say, if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything's a nail. So you go to the hip doctor, it's going to be a hip problem. Back doctor, back problem. Foot doctor, foot problem. You get orthotics, et cetera, massage, knots, chiro, subluxations, PT, core weakness. Because everybody's just seeing the component. They're not seeing how the whole kind of puzzle fits together and trying to, um, you know, zoom out. So again, remember that the whole body uh, is connected. Uh, I don't know if that should say bodies, whatever. The whole body is connected, okay? And what I mean by that is uh, so many people uh, that I treat, they're just, uh, you know, they're amazed or surprised when I tell them that, hey, we're going to we're gonna try to treat your arms to maybe help your leg, or we're going to use your trunk to fix your leg. We're going to use the other leg to fix your leg, your hip, your back, whatever it may be. So, um, you know, it seems like these things aren't connected, and people are like, oh, my gosh, how could that be? But the whole body's connected. So... Uh, most people that I've that I've seen and treated have only been treated in or pretty close to the region or area of pain. And while this is okay and it can work, get that it's just like a balloon. There's a whole system. The body is just a closed system where you've got your arms, you've got your trunk, and you've got your legs. All right. And uh, if you think about it, right, if you squeeze this balloon, um, some other part of the balloon is going to be affected. So, you know, if you're, if you're limping or if you have a bad trunk or back or something like that, you're going to change the distribution such that you might, you know, bubble the balloon out a little bit more over here, whatever. You might put more weight on one leg, um, whatever that may be, just get that sort of like a balloon. Um, any moving, any part of the balloon can impact and will impact and must impact, uh, another part. So, you know, it's how movement in any part of the body, uh, can potentially impact another body region, even if you think that it's not connected. It is. So most people when they're in pain, this is what they see. They try random things. Uh, they think that they, uh, you know, they go on Google, they say, see random recommendations. Uh, they've gone to see everybody who's recommending different things and giving different opinions. And this is what they see. And I want to bring some order to that because this is what I see. I think through systems and feedback loops. So at the big picture, again, 30,000 foot view, if we zoom out here, this is how uh, the world works. All right. We've got this environment. All right. It can be good, bad, ugly, whatever. We've got these inputs. We've got processes and then we've got outputs and then we've got feedback. So, you know, the environment is like a major uh, factor as it relates to considering what happens with the whole system. So uh, when you look at this picture, what do you feel? If you're like me, you're probably like, man, that feels good. Like I would love to be there. Like I kind of feel happy, like motivated. Like I want to work out or go for a run and sprint into the water with my daughter or whatever it is. It brings up cer certain emotions. So um, we like to think that we're logical, but really just emotional. So uh, for example, um, you know, we know that in countries uh, or states, for example, that have a lot of sun, 
uh, and you know it's kind of beautiful like this, well, the people are generally more uh, active, healthy, uh, and happy. So think about like Colorado, it's like the healthiest city in the world. It's beautiful there. It looks like maybe not the beach here, but um, it kind of looks like this, all right? Uh, you know, California, I used to live out there and it was sunny and 75 every day. That gives a different type of motivation and emotion to it, all right? And that's only uh, changed by just the environment versus this. This is the same beach. Imagine if uh, you had this and then the next day was like this. Like, how would you feel, right? If you're like every other human, you're going to feel maybe a little sad. Maybe, um, yeah, you feel lack of motivation. You maybe eat some more cookies that day or whatever it is. It's going to stir something up. And generally, um, it's going to be more of a kind of negative, uh, you know, depressed type of feeling. So uh, in countries where it's super cold, uh, you know, it's not sunny all the time. Alaska, Antarctica, there's more um, prevalence of uh, depression. So, again, I think that makes sense to you. So just get that when it comes to healing your body, if you're putting yourself in a yucky environment like this, then you're going to feel yucky. If you put yourself in a yummy environment, like the sunshine, you know, the mountains, wherever, picture it, uh, then you're probably going to feel yummy or your chances are much better. So again, if you have a yucky environment and you are, you know, but you go and you get pills, you get injections, you have surgery, you try certain movements with a PT, chiro, massage therapist, whatever, uh, but your environment, like I said, uh, the what you're doing at work or how you're sleeping or how you're moving or just, I don't know, like the mental weather in your head, <laughs> the mindset, if you will, uh, is not good, then it's not going to work. All right. It's going to impact it negatively and it's really going to hold things back. It's going to break down the system. So you need to clean up your environment first. And now if we look at the parts of the system, we have inputs. So uh, an input is basically a movement. So you can move your arms, trunk, legs. I guess other areas too, but those are the three big body regions. And then you have a process through which you move those things or which you'll uh, kind of play out those inputs. You can either move yourself, internal movement, or you can go somewhere and have them move you, external movement. I prefer internal because it's super empowering, all right? You own the motion and therefore you are in control as you have the tools, knowledge, and understanding to solve your own issue. You can move, um, you know, in the area of pain or you can work in the area of pain or injury or you can move outside of it. So if your leg hurts, you don't have to just work that leg, although that's usually what happens. You can work your trunk or your arm and see a change there. Think back to the balloon. You can work into what feels yucky versus yummy. You can work uh, with reps versus holds or with resistance versus without, and the list could go on and on. So there's certain processes you can follow for treatment. And then outputs. So we do these movements, we do them a certain way, right? And then we need to retest and we're going to retest the arms, the trunk, and legs, and we're going to get something out of that. And this is where feedback comes in. You're either going to feel better, same, or worse. And then you're going to have a question, it's that question mark, right, of like, what, what the heck do I do now? Well, then you're going to follow what I call the rules for fixing myself, which is if you're better, you're going to do, uh, I call that rule one, you're gonna do the same thing again. Why mess with something if it's working? If you feel the same, you're gonna do rule number two, uh, and that's, you know, you're gonna tweak it, you're gonna change it up, and if you're feeling worse, I call that rule number three, you're not going to do that. You're going to stop. And then you're just going to repeat it. It's a system. And so this is it, right? So you've got the environment in the top right here, shifting your pain triggers, morphing motions help, helps clean up that environment. It turns it from dark, rainy uh, to you know sunny. Uh, and then we've got movement as medicine. So where we test, that's the input. We're going to test using motion. We're going to treat a certain way. Then we're going to retest and we're going to get some feedback. Uh, do I feel better, same, or worse? And then I'm going to follow some rules to go back and decide what to do next. And then we keep repeating that um, over and over and over again to learn more about our condition uh, and the system. So just know this, garbage in, garbage out. So uh, inputs equal outputs. Uh, so if you are, uh, you know, crappy sleeping habits, then you're probably going to feel pretty tired and worn out. If you eat crummy food, then you're probably going to feel pretty crummy and maybe look it too, right? Um, same thing goes with motion. If you put yucky motion in, then you're probably going to get yucky motion out. If you're doing things that hurt so good, well, they still hurt. So this is why stretching a painful area, you know, I'm not going to say it never works, but it usually doesn't work. All right. Because it feels yucky and therefore you feel more yucky. So you have to ask yourself, do I want to feel more yucky? Then do things that make you feel yucky. Do you want to hurt or do you want to feel so good? Well, then don't do things that hurt so good because they still hurt. All right. Um, so input again equals output. So vote for yummy uh, throughout this process as you're shifting pain triggers, treating yourself, just always remember this.